on today's episode of the Cryptoverse. Let's all get on the same page here and look at the arguments for and against SegWit and Bitcoin Unlimited, the two most famous Bitcoin scaling solutions. Voltoro is the one-of-a-kind online exchange where you can trade between gold and Bitcoin. Reserves can be audited online at any time and are protected from confiscation and company failure. Sign up for a free account today by checking out the link in the video description below. Hi there guys and welcome to the latest episode of the Cryptoverse, your regular dose of news and commentary on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. I am your host, Chris Coney. Today is Monday the 13th of February 2017, so let's get into today's episode. The biggest winner today by a country mile is Made Safe. I think it's the only coin in the top 20 that has gained value this 24-hour uh, period. So Made Safe ranks as the 8th most capitalized coin, a Made Safe coin now sits at 18 cents, having gained 7.95% of its value. Biggest loser of the day, I think the only double digit loser today, 12th position by market cap is Iconomy, now down at roughly 35 cents a coin, and it's dropped 16.59% of its value in the last 24 hours. It's quite a steep drop if I'm perfectly honest. But like I said, other than that, oh, I'm lying, Waves is also up 1%, but other than that, I think everything else is a down, either a, yeah, at least a single digit. So there's only one double digit loser, and that was Iconomy. Over to the Bitcoin price chart then. Right, I can now say that that ascending triangle breakout has now officially failed to reach its target. So there's, you know, there's this new data. Um, there's a lot of new data. So I can't now hold on to that uh, target. So I've deleted the horizontal line at 11.24. That run out of the breakout was interrupted by that news from China about the exchanges halting their withdrawals. Now what's significant about this new pattern of candlesticks is that the retracement to the trend line has set a new lower high, which is here, but it's also set a higher low, which I'll point out here. Now I look at that and I see the beginning of a symmetrical triangle forming, or a sort of a squeezed penta, which to me is a sign that the overall market is becoming increasingly indecisive. That's not a surprise given that there's been, uh, there was enough optimism to break out of that $1,000 mark but then it got interrupted by the bad news out of China. So that might have been optimism combined with, oh dear, bad news. And that's made people a bit cautious and a bit indecisive. Right now, though, we find ourselves squarely back below the $1,000 mark once again. In fact, it's trading right now below the $1,000 mark. Now, I'm not covering this particular story today, but there is a story out on the Merkle saying that the Chinese trading volume on localbitcoins.com has rocketed last week. And I verified this myself on Coindance, which I will show you here. That's the wrong one. This is the one. So this is local Bitcoin's volume for China. And you can see on the far right there, which was week beginning the 4th of February, the bar is an all-time high of around 6.6 .6 million yuan has been traded. Now, this most significant thing about that is that this trading volume data, it doesn't show up on the candlestick charts, and neither can we draw a candlestick charts for local Bitcoin trades. I suppose it was to be technically possible using the local Bitcoins API. But in any case, I'm not too worried about this because prices from one exchange to the next, they can't get too far apart before arbitrage traders start buying the Bitcoin at the cheaper exchange and then selling it at the more expensive one and then making a profit on the difference, right? So going back to the chart then, the last time I actually bought some Bitcoin was at 967. I don't sit all day with the chart open. I just happened to open the chart to check the price. It was in the middle of the crash, coincidentally. And then I just took the opportunity to buy some at 967. The strongest indicator for me about the direction would be this um, confluence of the 50 day moving average and the longer term trend line being in an upward direction and also coinciding with each other. A quick stop over at the Litecoin network to see if segregated witness is activated yet. The answer is no, but we do have a new record here. 
SegWit miner support on the Litecoin network is now 6.04%. That's jumped another 3% overall uh, from Friday. So we didn't check it over the weekend, but now we're at 6% on our way to 75%. So that's uh, almost doubled since the last time we checked it. Contrast that with the SegWit on the Bitcoin network, which right now is at 24.6%. That's up another 1.3% on um, Friday's number. And uh, it's not the highest it's ever been, I don't think. It is, actually. Look at my data here. I'm tracking it. The highest it ever was was 24.5%. It's now 24.6%. So that is an all-time high based on the data that I'm using. More importantly than that, I always point this out, but you look at the orange bar, which is the SegWit support by the last 144 blocks, which is today's data. And it's actually even higher than that. That's like, what, I don't know. It's hard to eyeball it, but it's at least 26, 27% support today. And that original figure I quoted of 24.6, that's based on the last week's worth of blocks. So this is um, this is interesting. It's not a big gains. It's not as big gains as the Litecoin network. That's consistently moving up. Whereas Bitcoin doesn't seem to be consistently moving up, which I would rather it did. In terms of the news then, I have turned to the Coin Telegraph. A Joseph Young article was published just 20 hours ago. So for those of you that don't know this or are new to the scaling topic, SegWit is a technology that was put forward by the Bitcoin core developers who also wrote the version of the Bitcoin software that is currently running the Bitcoin network. And SegWit is their proposal or their proposed solution to increasing the volume of transactions that the Bitcoin network can handle. Because quite a few times recently, there have been some major traffic jams that have caused transactions to take hours, if sometimes a whole day, to confirm. I know I had I had a transaction that took like 34 hours to confirm, even though I paid a decent transaction fee. And that seems to be happening more and more often, and you can verify that on um, the mempool stats. Bitcoin Unlimited, on the other hand, is it's not the only other alternative to scaling Bitcoin, but it is one of the most talked about ones. And they have their own ideas about how to increase the capacity of the Bitcoin network that differ from SegWit. And the reason I've chosen to cover this is because some of my patrons on Friday, we were chatting in the chat group and um, they were saying, Chris, will you do a, a comparison between SegWit and Bitcoin Unlimited? And I said, yeah, I know that's an interesting topic, but to be honest, to be perfectly honest, these software systems, because Bitcoin sort of sits in between lots of different industries, software development, economics, and particularly advanced math and cryptography, uh, for the average person, even me as a computer scientist, the cryptography stuff starts to appro approach the boundary of very advanced math, um, which I just goes completely over my head. I do not have the expertise at that level to critique such advanced solutions. So it's okay, you know, it's a bit of fun for us as commentators even as fans of Bitcoin to say, yeah, SegWit or Bitcoin, but we can't really judge based on the technical uh, competency of the of the solutions because we just don't understand them. So I comment from what I know of the principles of both solutions because I can judge it from that point of view, what they're trying to achieve and conceptually, but I can't critique the specific implementations of each one. I can only really critique the approaches that they are taking, you know, on a conceptual level. So it says here that the, the main claim of SegWit supporters is that nearly 60% of nodes within the Bitcoin network are supporting the activation of SegWit. According to 21 Inc. Bit, bit nodes, approximately 56% of all Bitcoin nodes are in support of Bitcoin Core version 0 0.13. So that's that's nice. That's a nice step of preparation, but it means nothing in terms of getting SegWit to activate because it's talking about 60% of all nodes, right? And it's the miners who have the actual vote when it comes to actually activating a new version of the software on the network. It then goes on to say that Atlanta Digital Currency Fund expressed their support for SegWit, stating that SegWit's transaction malleability solution opens the door for Lightning, a micropayment solution that is ultimately beneficial for the whole long-term growth of Bitcoin. So transaction malleability is just what it sounds like. It's the possibility that an unconfirmed Bitcoin transaction could be reshaped uh, in a malicious way and in such a way that the attacker could do it without being detected. The transaction would still seem valid even though it had been messed with. 
that's transaction malleability. Kind of to my mind, it's like the transaction is still like uh, moldable clay until it's confirmed. And when it's in its moldable clay form, someone could grab it and sort of reshape it into a into a different pose. And then, you know, once it gets baked in the kiln, it solidifies as something what you didn't intend. So that's pretty bad. Now, if if we could build the Lightning Network on top of Bitcoin, uh, with this problem still in place, that would cause some serious, serious problems, specifically because of the way that the Litecoin, uh, sorry, not Litecoin, the Lightning Network uses these these daisy chain of, of contract and payment channels. So really, having transaction malleability and uh, Lightning really can't happen. Now, as far as I know, the Bitcoin Unlimited developers have proposed a an alternative solution to this transaction malleability stuff, and they call it flexible transactions. Now, it's a bit too involved to go into on the cryptoverse, but it's quite a clever idea, and it uses some well-established computer science principles that I do happen to understand. But if you're interested in the detail of that, go to the Bitcoin Unlimited website and then dig into it. So moving on to... Oh, I'm going past the yellow bit. Under this heading of betrayal to the Bitcoin mining community, it says that Gang Wu, How BTC's CEO, offered his strong stance against SegWit, describing the Bitcoin core development team's effort in pushing SegWit development instead of a 2 megabyte hard fork, which they previously agreed on at the Hong Kong Consensus Conference, as a betrayal to the mining community. Now, I did actually cover this meeting on the Cryptoverse last year when it was conducted. Apparently, when all these Bitcoin industry folks got together in Hong Kong, they agreed to like a compromise solution where the miners agreed to start working to upgrade towards SegWit, and in the meantime, the Bitcoin block size would be doubled to 2 megabytes. At least that would provide some short-term increase to the capacity of the network and alleviate some of the stress. But as we all know, the block size hasn't increased. Now, all I can say about that, I don't really, I'm not privy to the specific discussion, but what I can say is that on a point of principle, if the Bitcoin core developers signed an agreement, they should honor it. All right, that's pretty straightforward, right? And if they have betrayed their agreement of a signed contract, that's pretty bad because that's a... Uh, that's a weakness of character, and that is, to me, a definite no-no. So I've, I've gone down here to the bit where it says, uh, quote, Bitcoin Unlimited is not even remotely an option, close quote. It says here that Alex Bergeron, Ber Bergeron, sorry if I've murdered that name, from Blockstream stated that flexible transactions aren't viable alternatives as they aren't backwards compatible, and they've received little to no peer review and aren't technically sound. Now, to me, that's pretty important. I've spoken before about the attitude of software developers and it being important for them not to be arrogant. So SegWit is a soft fork, meaning like if SegWit activates and you are running a non-SegWit version of the Bitcoin software, say the previous version, then you won't necessarily get kicked off of the network, right? Because the structure of the blocks are not that dissimilar to the previous version, right? Now, Bitcoin Unlimited, by contrast, is a hard fork, meaning everyone who doesn't turn off the highway with everyone else gets left behind and can no longer participate in the network. Now, that might be okay for some smaller experimental altcoins with a smaller community, but for Bitcoin, with so many people involved, so many companies, and so much market capitalization, there's a lot of money at stake, it's just too big of a risk. Now, it mentions here about the Bitcoin Unlimited code not being extensively peer-reviewed and that was evidenced by the 13 bitcoins that were lost when that mining pool it was bitcoin.com i think it was they um they were mining using the bitcoin limited software and they mined an invalid block which meant that they didn't get their block reward and they didn't get any of the transactions fees either and it ended up um ended up losing the opportunity to earn twelve thousand odd dollars yeah, good job that wasn't um, running the entire network. Otherwise, it could have been a lot, lot worse. So moving on to the cyan bit here, the blue bit. It says industry leaders and large scale Bitcoin companies like Coinbase and Blockchain.info have already expressed their support for SegWit. Blockchain.info is listed as SegWit ready in the SegWit adoption list of the Bitcoin core development team. Now of all the solutions on the table, SegWit is regarded as being the most extensively developed and it's been extensively tested. I mean, 
even when they were developing it, it was the, it was a long time in development. And even when the code was finished, they didn't release it. They they ran it on the test net extensively um, before it was actually then released for you know public consumption. And I also can't help think about what Andreas Antonopoulos said recently. He said that there's this, this limited window of opportunity to make changes to Bitcoin's fundamentals. And once enough stuff gets built on top of Bitcoin that depends on those fundamentals, well, then they cannot be changed, right? And at that point, the Bitcoin software at its very core becomes the Bitcoin we will always have, meaning then additional layers will have to be built on top of it to grow additional features and additional capacity and all that kind of stuff, which is fine. It's kind of how the internet is built in layers of technology. For me personally, though, this is why Segway is the solution. It's more than just a bit of software that increases Bitcoin's capacity. It provides the platform for these additional layers to be built on. And one of those layers is the Lightning Network. I was talking to my patrons about this in the chat as well the other day. If SegWit gets activated and then the Litecoin network launches after that, it will make Bitcoin very, very difficult, if not impossible, to compete with. So thanks for joining me today, guys. If you liked this episode, hit the like button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button. Please leave me a comment below with some feedback and get subscribed. And please support the Cryptoverse and boost cryptocurrency adoption by going to Cryptoversity.com forward slash podcast and becoming a patron from a few dollars a month you can secure cryptoversity's future get unlimited access to all cryptoversity courses and access a private patrons only chat group where you get direct access to me that is all for today guys i will be back tomorrow with another episode of the cryptoverse so until then it's me chris coney saying bye for now